Cell transport. Now, we got to take a quick look back at the plasma membrane that we covered before. It's a double layer of fat. It's a phospholipid bilayer. It's got receptor molecules on it and different proteins to help things come across this plasma membrane. The function is to separate the outside from the inside, but the other function is to control what enters or leaves the cell. Okay, so how does it do that? How does it control what enters and leaves the cell? So how do things get in and out? Well, if the molecule is nonpolar, it'll pass through the plasma membrane by diffusion. Now, before we get into what that diffusion part is, what do we mean by nonpolar? So if it's polar, that means it has a positive end and a negative end. Well, that would be for a polar molecule. So if it doesn't have a positive end and and a negative end, it's not polar, nonpolar. So if it doesn't it's not if it's not charged, it'll pass through the plasma membrane by diffusion. So diffusion is when a substance moves from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. This requires no energy in any way, shape, or form. So let's say that we have some form of membrane here, and on this side we have a whole bunch of whatever molecule that it is, and on this side we have very little. So again, now we have a concentration gradient, areas of different solutes, okay? So again, we are going to diffuse from an area of high concentration on this side. So we have a high concentration here and a low concentration here. So it will diffuse until the concentration sizes are equal. So which way will the substances move? Here we have a high concentration. Here we have a low concentration. So on this guy, we'll be moving this way from right to left. Now, if it were only that easy, something that we've, uh, that I've mentioned before is this thing called a solute. A solute is something that is dissolved in water. Similar to when you dissolve sugar in water, the sugar would be a solute. If two areas have an equal amount or an equal concentration of solutes, the two areas are said to be isotonic, iso meaning the same. All solutions want to become isotonic, so we have things like diffusion. If one area has more solute, meaning a higher concentration, than another area, the area with the higher concentration is hyper er tonic. High, higher concentration is hyper tonic. Just like when you hyper extend your knee, you're extending your knee too much. You have too much of it. High, so high concentration is hyper tonic. Conversely, if one area has a lower concentration or has less solute, it is hypotonic. So less solute is hypotonic, more solute is hypertonic. So again, if we had this area, we're over here and we here's all these solutes that are dissolved and I got three or four over here, okay? So this side would be hypertonic. This side would be hypotonic. So, is side A hypertonic, isotonic, or hypotonic? Okay, side A, this guy. Well, there's definitely less solutes over here. Here's a solute, here's a solute, here's a solute. Side A definitely has less solutes, so side A would be hypotonic. Okay, side A would be hypotonic. Okay, so... Is side B hypertonic, isotonic, and or hypotonic? Well, side B has much more solute, so side B would be hypertonic. Now, what would happen? Here's the curveball. 
What would happen if the solutes or molecules are too big to pass through this membrane? So what would happen if the solute, okay, this solute here should want to go that way. But what if it can't? What if it's blocked? What if it's too big? You can't get a semi truck through a door that you just walked into your bedroom or your classroom or the car door, okay? A semi truck can't fit in those things. It's too big. So what if the solute is too big to fit through there? So the solutes just bounce off of the membrane. Well, remember that we also said a few moments ago that two areas always want to become isotonic, okay? I want you to think back if you've ever made Kool-Aid or lemonade, and you take it, you take a drink of it after you make it, it's like, whoa, 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 oh, that lemonade is way too sour. You add more sugar to it, okay? Um, or if it's too tart, you add more water to it. Or if, you're, if your Kool-Aid is too sugary, you add more water to it. Okay, so what the same thing is going to happen here. They want to be isotonic, so we're going to add water to the solution. Okay, so here's again, here's the confusing part. Uh, I'm going to redraw this up here. Okay, excuse me for a second. We said that this was the hypotonic side, and this was the hypertonic. Oops, forgot to be hypertonic. What this also means is the hypo has more water. It has less solute, right? It's hypotonic, so it means it has less solute, but it has more water. Hypertonic means it has more solute, but if it has more solute, that also means it has less water, okay? We said that these things want to be isotonic, if the solutes are too big to fit through, they just bounce off of that membrane, well, the solutes can't move. The only thing that's left is the water is going to have to move. So where's the water going to move to? Is it going to move from A to B this way? Or is it going to move from B to A that way? Well, where is there more water? So it can't be this. There's more water on side A. So the water is going to move here, and the water is going to move, and the water is going to move, and the water is going to move, trying to dilute this side so the two areas can become isotonic. This happens all the time in cells. So here we're going to say that we have a cell uh, in a hypertonic solution, okay, a hypertonic. That means we have lots of solute, okay, lots of solute and um, little water on the outside, okay. So that means the cell has more water and the cell has less solute. So what happens, if the solute's too big, Okay, to come in, that means water has to go out. When water goes out, the cell shrivels. Not good for the cell, it dies. In isotonic solutions, everything's happy, go lucky. So some water will come in, but water goes out. Some water will come in, some water will go out. So there's going to be some movement, but nothing's going to happen. The cell's going to stay normal. Last example, okay, hypotonic. So there's less solute in the outside and more solute on the inside, okay, which means that there is more water on the outside and less water on the inside. So if the solute is too big to go through the plasma membrane, that means water will go in, water will go in, which is kind of good for a plant cell. We don't need to worry about that. But with an animal cell with no cell wall, what's going to happen is it's going to lice or burst or pop the cell. Because just like blowing up air into a balloon, you keep feeding it with water, more water, more water, more air in the balloon, more air in the balloon, more air in the balloon. Eventually, the balloon pops. Here, water keeps adding, so eventually the cell lyses. 
So we just talked about diffusion, which is a type of passive transport. Now we're going to talk about facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is the diffusion of solutes with the help of a transport protein. This is for polar molecules. This is for the stuff that has a positive and a negative end. Okay, It is passive transport because, again, it has no energy requirement. Okay. The molecules that go across the plasma membrane by facilitated diffusion are polar molecules. So the same thing here is just we have a protein to facilitate or help move polar molecules across the plasma membrane. That's it. Okay. So here's a diagram of facilitated diffusion. Here's our protein. We're going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration with the help of a protein. No energy is being used. So is this passive transport? The answer is 110% absolutely yes. This is still passive transport. Active transport, on the other hand. Active transport, okay, pumps molecules across their membrane against their concentration gradients. So here we see uh, an area of low concentration, and here's our area of high concentration. And we're going from low to high. Well, that's the opposite of what we've been talking about. But you see ATPs here as well. So we're using energy to go against the concentration gradient, or in other words, going from low concentration to high concentration. This requires energy in the form of ATP. So if we're going from low concentration to high concentration, and we're using ATP, it's active transport. So I just want you to look at this guy right here. Okay, Is this active transport or passive transport? Well, we're going from high to low, so that has to be passive. Okay, and what kind of passive is it? Well, there's no protein in there, so it must just be regular old diffusion. Here, let's look at this one now. Here we're going from high concentration to low concentration, so that's passive. Okay, but now we have a protein, so it's facilitated diffusion. Now, last one, we're going from low to high and using ATP, so that's active transport. Okay, so a few things. Uh, we have different types of transport. Uh, the two big ones are either passive transport or active transport. There's three different types of passive transport that we talked about. Diffusion, facilitated diffusion, and then the special one that we didn't really highlight until now is osmosis. And osmosis is just simply the diffusion of water. Active transport, again, energy is used, can go from low concentration to high concentration. Sometimes molecules are too big to have proteins help them get across. So they're too big for facilitated diffusion. Yet these large molecules still need to get in or out of a cell. So they have a whole plasma membrane help them out. This process definitely, absolutely, positively uses energy. Okay, But the thing about it here is whether we're going in for endocytosis or out exocytosis. So endos in, exo is out. So endocytosis is when the plasma membrane helps large molecules moving into the cell. And exocytosis is when the plasma membrane helps large molecules move out of the cell. Both of them, endocytosis and exocytosis, uses energy. And that is all she wrote. It's like this and like that and like this and uh, it's like that and like this and like that and uh, it's like this. So just chill to the next episode.